Tattoos have shown the progress and advancement of American culture over the past century. Although tattoos have existed for thousands of years, their prominent appearance in America started around sailors' encounters in the Pacific theater. Tattoos take on different meanings for everyone that gets one, and why people get tattoos has changed over time. Regardless of reasons, tattoos serve as one of the best metrics for change among the American people. Although tattoos are an integral part of our collective culture, they have been largely stigmatized and only now are beginning to be recognized for the art form they truly are. Before World War II in America, the only place you would ever find tattoos was in circus sideshow acts. This shows America's early disapproval of tattoos by associating them with one of the most ostracized groups in society. Tattooing remained as a fringe part of American culture for many years. For me, I mean, I'm a sideshow freak. That's what I am. And I look at the history of sideshow freaks and I look at the way that they talked about the way they were treated in their biographies. Uh, people wouldn't put change in his hand because he tattooed the palms of it. That was a big one. Like he was tattooed and people didn't have much of a problem with him. But when he got to his face and the palms of his hands, people didn't want to touch him. This mentality largely remained heading into the Second World War. So back in the 1940s, 1950s, it was actually very common for your grandfather, great grandmother, whatever, to be not in a tattoo because no, sailors and prostitutes were getting them. Back in them days, the, the service kept the business alive and now it's gone mainstream, it's gone nuts. World War II was shaping up to be a time of immense change for all Americans and no one could predict the outcomes of this global conflict. I had a wife and two kids but bear in mind at that time uh, we were a very courteous, uh, 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 well we were very loyal uh, on people. I mean it was nothing to, 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 to enlist. As thousands of U.S. sailors poured into the Pacific, they were stationed in bases on Pacific islands and off mainland China. Here they would go into seaports and encounter many different cultural facets, including tattooing. Oh, absolutely pivotal in terms of giving us the opportunity, which is to say Americans the opportunity, to travel to places where tattoo was already popular in some way. This was when American sailors are now going off and they're in the Caribbean, they're in Polynesia, and they're encountering tattoo. They would like to get you uh, in Pearl Harbor, Honolulu. They would love to get the young sailors in and tattoo parlors are all over the place. But I didn't want anything to do with it myself. Uh -huh. uh, I, I'd rather have my picture taken with a girl or something. You know, that kind of <laughs> but uh, other, other than that, uh, it was an experience, let's put it that way, at 17. Sailors weren't the only ones who encountered foreign tattooing in the Pacific. American artists also went overseas and exchanged ideas, techniques, and styles with Asian tattoo artists. Perhaps the most important artist to participate in this exchange was Norman Collins, commonly known as Sailor Jerry. Sailor Jerry is the, you know, godfather of modern um, American traditional, but I mean, certainly goes back further than him. A lot of the designs he has, actually, in most of his books, are just distillations or, or redraws of stuff that he saw. If you pick up any of the Sailor Jerry Flash books, all you're going to see is uh, a lot of naval themed stuff, obviously, but you're also going to see stuff from China. This exchange and cultural diffusion was vital to the future of American tattooing. And so I think that in terms of the international influence, there's always been, I think, in American tattooing, this kind of fascination with um, tattooing as like a, a cultural crossing, a boundary crossing kind of a thing. And so that it can be, um, it can be something that about like, I'm going to get this tattoo because of it's really, really traditional in the group that I belong to, whether that group is, um, you know, and for Americans, it tends to be something like, a, I'm in the Navy and I did this thing, so I'm going to get this traditional tattoo. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, then there's also this idea of the tattoo as souvenir. Like, I have traveled, so I'm going to get a tattoo from this other place. We all went into different areas, Guam, Okinawa, uh, I don't know what all the islands were, Wake Island. Mm -hmm. uh, we were based at Guam, uh, and everybody was just waiting for the invasion of Japan. But the invasion never came and many abroad were ready to assimilate into American society. So we, we celebrated our own way, but it was a very joyous occasion, obviously, because that meant the war was over. And uh, believe me, we were glad it was, too, because I, I, I got back to civilian life. Man. 
While many sailors came back to the States and settled down to family life or education, many others joined or formed motorcycle clubs. As outsiders of society, people associated their actions with that of rebellion, but they saw tattoos as an act of unity among the veteran community. It became uh, widely associated as a biker thing because that's what a lot of these military people were doing. They would, they'd come home from the military and they'd start a bike club. You know what I mean? That's how a lot of these bike clubs start. And then that's kind of how the tattoo thing kind of um, wound up being associated with outlaws a lot. You know what I mean? And there wasn't um, there wasn't a real, real focus on like quality artwork. Tattooing sort of kind of grew, but it was still a little kind of dark and sketchy and hidden, probably until like the 80s where it started to get popular. And Advancements in tattooing machines allowed for radical changes in the art. Some of these changes included the introduction of a machine with the ability to shade and blend colors. This allowed for many more possibilities of what an artist could draw, resulting in a further diversification of each artist's style. With these new styles to choose from, many more people found that they wanted a tattoo. You know, the, the ink started improving, the machine started improving, the needle started improving. All that probably happened between, uh, say, the late 80s into the early 2000s, I would say was like the biggest um, developmental period. Soon after the technological advancements of the late 80s, an unpredictable phenomenon would expand the popularity and acceptance of tattoos. Of course in the 90s it just kind of picked up some speed and right as soon as I started my apprenticeship I was learning kind of your traditional style of tattooing and then all those TV, show, TV shows hit. All the reality tattoo shows hit. Uh, as soon as those shows started to hit it definitely made tattooing a lot more popular and it opened up the doors to so many more people. They were like, oh, so it isn't just social deviants and sailors and military guys, and it's not just guys in pr prison getting tattoos. Uh, all of a sudden it started to become more acceptable because they saw that it was really an art. Uh, you know, my sense, of, and this is one of the things that got me really interested in tattooing, um, is I think there's been a shift um, in American culture and in artistic culture, maybe a little bit more generally, away from a really um, elite focus. Like there's been a sort of a critique of the idea that, that art is only for certain people. I would say, I mean, the global influence nowadays with the internet and social media, especially social media, uh, Instagram and Facebook and MySpace back you know, 10, 15 years ago, it showed everybody what everybody was doing across the world. That international spectrum of looking at it that way kind of, I think, created a real global tattoo community, in a sense, where where we thought things would kind of like look specifically one way in Japan, not so much. It's not totally that Japanese style as we know it traditionally. There are people there doing crazy Geiger-influenced stuff and realistic portraits and things like that also, because now they look at us for influence, just like we were looking at them for influence. Artistic exploration and exchange between members of the tattoo community has driven the medium from being viewed as trivial markings to an esteemed art form. It's hard to get people to freak out or shit because the vast majority of people are really cool about tattoos now. It just doesn't register as something that they're, that they're picky about. This idea of being inclusive and diverse and um, letting people do what they want to do rather than policing people's bodies and saying, you know, that's not acceptable. Tattooing has always left an indelible mark on American culture and cultures around the world. Tattoos have always been important and they will continue to be important. I, I, I think that it's growing in, in, in marvelous ways. What the inks allow for, I think what the needles, as you were saying in the 80s, the machines getting better, I think what the machines allow for, and I think our own sort of public encouragement to see what can the art form do is what allows it to grow 